Let's give you something to talk about. In the past seven weeks in Northern Virginia, 1,700 fewer homes were listed. Just under 1,500 fewer homes went pending. Here's the question I wanna ask you. Once the lockdown is over, who will rush to the market first, sellers or buyers? What's up, people? This is your Northern Virginia real estate market update for April 2020. We're comparing April 2019 to April 2020 to find the story. In this session, we're covering leading indicators. Next week, show will be dedicated to lagging indicators like average sales price, days on market, buyer financing. I'm your host, Abraham Walker with Ask A. Walker, your Northern Virginia real estate agent. Every week I bring you the latest information about the local real estate market in under 10 minutes. After you watch this show, you'll be able to impress your coworkers or know more about the local market. Either one is okay with me. Before we get started, I have one favor to ask you. It takes time and energy to put each one of these shows together. If you learn something new or find this information helpful or entertaining, let me know by doing one of the following. Leave a comment, like this video, share with a friend, or subscribe to this channel. What's the good news with the market? On a national level, unemployment claims peaked at 6.9 million five weeks ago and has been below 5 million for the past two weeks. Like I said last week, the retail trade sector and the leisure and hospitality sectors are the two industries that are believed to be the most harmed by the current economic shutdown. This represents less than 10% of Northern Virginia's workforce. Economists do not know if this will start to drag other sectors down over time. The bad news is new listings are still plummeting. When compared to this time last year, while prices are remaining steady, we're not really sure what to call this market. Let's have a conversation over five charts that should help us understand what's going on in the market. This first chart you should be very familiar with. We've been using this same chart over the past three weeks to kind of look at what's going on with the new listings and pending listings. Week 16 last year, people filed taxes. That's why I believe that we had uh, almost similar numbers to uh, new listings. You can see that pendings weren't in impacted. This is the last time we're going to use this chart because there is an updated version I want to display to you or show you right now. Okay, so this is the new chart. I think it helps us to understand where we've come from, right? And also see where we could potentially be going. In this chart, you can start to see that pending sales actually were lower as far as the percentage change year over year than new listings at the very beginning of this whole cycle. Now we're starting to see that pendings are starting to creep up. They're starting to get back to some sense of normal, which is going to have a negative impact on the available inventory, which means this will be a stronger seller's market. This next chart covers new listings by price range. One story this chart doesn't cover is what percentage of the market is in certain price ranges. When I looked at the data, homes priced below $400,000 represented 25% of our market. How will this impact our market? That's a great question. I believe that the individuals at the lower end of the market are going to be negatively impacted by the pandemic because some of these individuals have jobs. They may be in those two sectors I mentioned earlier, retail trade or leisure and hospitality. If you look at the data, I don't believe that we should have any concerns about the luxury market because during most downturns or most recessions, the luxury market fares out okay because those individuals have the income to either stay in place or just wait out the market. Now let's look at the individual counties that make up Northern Virginia. We want to see if there are any stories that we can pull from this data to help us make better decisions moving forward. This data also shouldn't surprise you because we know that we are having a negative impact on our new listing inventory. What is a little shocking is that Arlington is only down 19% for the month of April. Arlington has more higher end homes compared to the rest of the market. And we really anticipated seeing them really underperform during this part of the pandemic. You may recall that homes priced below $400,000 represent 
of the total market. Well, similar to that, Fairfax County represents more than 40% of all new listings. This means that we want to pay special attention to what's going on in Fairfax County. Before we go, let's end on some good news. This chart right here shows us the average list price of new listings in the month of April. As you can see, new listings are actually increasing despite what's going on. I believe this is due to a combination of factors. One, there's very low inventory. Two, even in recessions, at the very beginning of recessions, sellers are not too keen about reducing their prices. It makes sense for sellers not to reduce their prices. Sellers have most likely been planning for the last three, six, nine months to sell during this time period. If someone's fixated on a certain price, then they're going to come on the market regardless of what the data shows. And we are still seeing a lot of activity because inventory is so low. So low inventory, more demand. What does that mean? Higher sales prices. And so we should expect to see this trend continue into May. Okay, so I wanna freestyle a little bit for you right now in the sense that I have some data that I'm looking at right now and it's talking about the total sales volume. What I'm seeing in this data is that in the month of April, our sales volume is down. For the, for the North of Virginia area by $1 billion. We're, we're down a billion dollars in new listings, right? New listings coming on the market. What does this mean for the market? Well, if, the, if, if we have a billion dollars that, that was not listed, that means that we also have a billion dollars that did not go pending. That means that we had a, a billion dollars of home inspections that did not take place. We have a billion dollars of appraisals that did not take place. We have, we have title companies that are not going to uh, make any income from that. We have agents that don't make any income from that. We have the local government that won't make any money from taxes that are collected when the properties are closed. We have those buyers who would have used moving companies who won't use those moving companies. A billion dollars of people won't use moving companies. We have people who would have probably done some type of updates or painting or, or some type of handyman work um, to their property that just won't get done. That's a billion dollars just in the month of April. I know that there are people talking about pent up demand, right? That that all of a sudden that that people are just going to go back outside after this is all over and it's going to be life as usual. A billion dollars represents just to give you an idea of this number in 2019 in April 2019 we did 3.38 billion in sales volume or not sales volume, but new listings came on the market, 3.38. That means that we're down 32% in sales volume. Where is that going to come from? This is the height of the market. So we're going to continue tracking this data because I wanna make sure that anyone who's watching this video makes a great decision today versus a terrible decision tomorrow. If you have any questions about any information I covered in this video, please, shoot me an email to abraham at askawalker.com. Um, you can also call me uh, or text me at 703-539-2053. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I, I want to make sure that if you're watching this video that you're taken care of. And I don't see people talking about this conversation online. I, I just don't see agents having this discussion. I, I believe it's because agents believe that we're supposed to be uh, full of good news. Uh, I think that we're just so, we're supposed to be full of news. We're, we're supposed to be the individual you come to to interpret the data, right? Interpret what's going on. Have a conversation, a dialogue between the two of us. I hope this happened today, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.